Hi there everyone, Bob Martin with the Nautilus Dry Docks once again and thank you for joining me. Uh, topic of this video is actually going to be on troubleshooting leaks in a watertight cylinder because uh, every once in a while what you'll find is you're going to end up with a little bit of water uh, in the bottom of your cylinder and obviously that is not a good thing. You got to figure out where that leak is coming from. So we are actually going to be utilizing um, this older d &E watertight cylinder to try and diagnose uh, where I have a leak and it's actually um, a pretty big one. This is an older cylinder so it could come from any number of places but uh, let's kind of go through the process about how we're going to figure out where that thing is coming from. Alright, let's take a quick look at how everything is, uh, is set up on this particular uh, cylinder. Like I said, this is an older uh, d &E Miniatures watertight cylinder. Got resin end caps, so kind of prone to cracking, especially around the outside edges. But fortunately, um, that does not actually impact uh, the ceiling surface, which is this big black O-ring that runs around the outside of it there. Um, we got some nice, you know, really solid state brass um, linkage seals. Uh, set up for 1 8 inch linkages and they've got uh, cup seals uh, that go around the outside. So, so those seal harder uh, the more pressure you have from the outside pressing in. Um, and we've got some, uh, some solid state threaded brass that goes through the inside. I'd be very surprised if we had any leaks uh, you know from there. And then there'd be a seal on the inside obviously for the main drive motor. So Besides that, there's only one more seal, and that's on the inside. If we take a look, uh, that's it right there. Uh, same seal, uh, same 1 8 inch linkage, and that's for the ballast tank actuator. So what we need to do is figure out where this pesky leak is coming from. And what I love to do, and this is a, a trick that um, Greg Sharp of uh, Deep Sea Designs back in the day taught me, um, I, I created this hose. Now the, the d &E cylinders actually have a Schrader valve, a tire valve, right here and what you're supposed to use that for is to relieve pressure once you put that cap on because you're compressing air uh, you want to relieve that pressure but um, what I actually did is kind of went one step further. I, I popped the valve out and ran a, a piece of silicone tubing down the inside of it and I capped it off. Now what that does is it actually gives us a tube that runs directly inside and what we can do is drop this thing in the water blow into the tube and look for bubbles um, so it allows you to very quickly identify where you have a leak coming from so that is going to be our next operation uh, let's bring this thing out to the pool drop it in there and look for some bubbles all right, here we are uh, outside of my pool, also known as uh, my gigantic test tank. You can see the cylinder floating in the back there. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna set up the camera, zoom in on the cylinder. We're gonna puff some air in there uh, and we'll see where we can get some bubbles from so we can identify where that pesky leak is from. All right, here we go. Uh, we got the cylinder floating in there. I'm gonna fill up the ballast tank because we wanna see if any air is gonna leak uh, out of these seals pop out my seal and my tube. Let's give it just a little puff of air and see what happens. Okay, I don't know if you can see that, but we got some air coming from the ballast tank area. Let's see if we can zoom in a little closer and we'll see where that's coming from. I don't know if you caught that, what it looks like to me. So we got a little break in the O-ring seal right behind this mounting flange. And the uh, air is escaping through there. I can't see any air escaping from any of the seals or anything, which is good. Um, I'm gonna give it just a couple more puffs so hopefully you can see that.
Yep, definitely coming directly behind this mounting flange. So, without being able to see any other visible leaks, that's going to be a great place uh, to start, but it looks like that could be the only thing. Um, good news for me, this is probably an easier fix even than uh, swapping out a seal, because all I'm going to do, I'm going to mix up some uh, epoxy, uh, pop out my electronics area, and uh, I'm going to put a bead of epoxy all around the outside there. Once this is in, really the bulkhead doesn't need to be removed uh, anymore. Uh, it's certainly a pain in the butt to try and get out. I wouldn't actually recommend it, but uh, we'll put some epoxy in there, get that thing all sealed up, uh, and this thing should be pretty bulletproof. Okay, here is the uh, finished repair of the cylinder. Look inside, you can see the Epoxy is in there. That's all cured, ready to go. Everything should be 100% completely sealed up. Uh, theoretically speaking, this should be a completely watertight, watertight cylinder at this point. But I'll drop it back in the pool here in a minute. Um, you know, pump some more air in, and we'll see what happens. But um, you know, in the meantime, uh, remember that trick with the silicone tubing. Um, the other thing that you can do. <clears throat> which is a really good idea is you can uh, actually run your receiver antenna out that tube. So you need to make uh, a silicone tube long enough to accept the entire radio antenna. But if you do that, there's no need to splice uh, you know, through a bolt uh, and run a wire on the outside. You just run the existing receiver antenna right out the tubing, cap the end, and you can still blow into that tube uh, and check the seal of your cylinder. So hope you like that little tip. Uh, it was a nice short video just kind of showing you how I check my cylinders. Stay tuned for more coming up soon and we'll catch you next time.